How do you maintain that sense of excitement? And what does a bad day look like for you? What what is what what is what does a bad a bad um, a bad reporting or writing day look like for you? You've got to lose interest on Sundays or screw around or do something, you know. Well, there are a lot of really bad writing days. There, I mean, I, I read my stuff. The first thing every morning, I read what I wrote the day before. In longhand, and you tend to write bare. I minimum. write the first three or four drafts in long. Then I type. Okay, and, and you, you tend to write a minimum of a thousand words a day. I try to write a thousand. Okay, a day. okay, yeah. and you get into you have an office. Can you tell us a little bit about how you do this thing that you do? You have an office outside of the house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I get I get up every morning. I put on. <laughs> well, you know, I, I put on a coat and tie. I mean, people laugh at it, but the reason is my publisher is really wonderful with me, and he never asks me when I'm going to be done. There is no deadline. So my books take seven or eight, or whatever. <laughs> Let's just leave it at seven or eight <laughs> years. So you're really in sort of a vacuum. And it's really easy to fool yourself that you're working hard when you're not. Mm -hmm. So I do, that's just a trick. It's like you, know, you write every day how many words you wrote, because you need, and I wear a coat and a tie because when I was a reporter, I wore a coat and a tie. Everyone wore a coat and a tie mm -hmm. then, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, they're all tricks to remind yourself you're going to a job and mm -hmm. you have to work. Mm -hmm. That's just a trick. Mm -hmm. That's it. And how do, you, how do you minimize distraction in your life? And how do you, when you look around you and see kids at Starbucks writing their thesis papers with <laughs> Dr. Dre headphones on, they've got a stimulation coming at them from a million places. How do you minimize your own distraction and keep your concentration? And then when you look at others and the way they do things, what, what do you think, what kind of work will be produced with this overstimulation? Well, I don't know about that. You know, it's, uh, it's probably too early you know, for us to know what the answer to that. Everything's happening mm -hmm. so, so fast. I don't, I turn off the, I don't get any phone calls. You don't you know? get any phone calls? Well, I turn off the, yeah, I get phone calls, but I turn my machine off and put it on mute so I don't get any, you know, during the day. Right. I don't know that I do anything, uh, uh -huh. you know, in, in, in particular. And your use of the internet, email? Well, I don't have email. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about future Robert Caro's, future biographers, when they have to deal also with Twitter, Facebook, email as documents? Do you, do you think about how they might write their own scholarly historian work? With yeah, I think there, but you know, every technological change and is significant at the time. Mm -hmm. Like with Johnson, it's the invent, it's long distance telephone rate. Like when Johnson first gets to Congress or when he's a congressional secretary in the 1930s and the early 1940s, um, long distance telephone, you get all these telegraphs. Uh, telegrams, mm -hmm. call me, Lyndon, something's happened, call me tonight. Uh, well, first, there's, uh, before that, I, I just saw it in the wrong place. Like, so j it was all done by letters, right? Mm -hmm. The telegraph hadn't really become, a, 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 and long distance telephone calls were very expensive, mm -hmm. so it wasn't used that much. So you get all these, like Johnson, makes John Connolly his administrative aide, and his job is to go around to the courthouses in the 10 uh, counties in Johnson's district and write Johnson a letter every week about what's happening politically back in the district. And they are masterpieces because John Connolly is a really brilliant guy. And these letters are like nine and 10 single spaced pages long. And it's like a course in rural politics. And I mean, you say, why, you know, what keeps you interested? Well, this is fast. I grew up in a city. I didn't know what rural, but this is really fascinating, you know? Um, it's, and it's something we knew nothing about, you know, or I knew nothing about. Actually, I don't think many people 
in cities knew what rural politics mm -hmm. knew. Like in Connolly's letters, you have to do this, this is what matters, you know. Don't mention Roosevelt here because this is what happened with this dam, you know. Mention soil terracing here because of so and so, you helped John Halcombe. So that was great. Then all of a sudden, long distance telephones become, uh, so you have telegrams saying, call me, big trouble down in the <laughs> Bay Strip, call me tonight. So you have to find a way of finding out what happened in that telephone mm. call. So that, of course, is into you try and interview Johnson, you try and interview jo uh, Johnson's staff, and you try and interview John Connolly. You I could interview Connolly. So you do it by interviews, and I'm sure there are way there are going to be ways to find out stuff, uh, even with this. There just be ways I don't know yet. Mm -hmm.